great. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Tim, for all the hard work that the foundation. I mean, you guys do an amazing job. Thank you for your love and support of our industry. We really appreciate it. And now we start our journey of discovery to new trends and techniques. And I could not have thought of a better person to bring that to us today. This person outrageously is adored by our entire industry and is the design expert of not only today, but tomorrow. For two decades, okay, he either has a great makeup artist because he does not look like he's been in here for two decades, trust me. Colin has been committed to our industry. He set trends. He's done some of the most amazing weddings and parties, both for private individuals and celebrities. He's traveled to the four corners of our world to plan some of the most unique experiences for individuals. The critical thing there is unique experiences. And he's here today to share our experience with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, the incomparable, dear friend of mine, Colin Cowie. Thank you for that great welcome. I can't tell you how excited, how happy, how grateful and honored I am to be here today. But before I go any further, let's have a big round of applause for last night's team who made us so welcome. It really was a great party. And I love attending other people's parties, particularly when there's a lot of tequila around. I always love tequila. It's one closer to a yes. But I do love industry events. And uh, there's nothing better than being able to inspire one another. And I think that we have the best job in the whole world, because when you think about it, we get paid well to spend other people's money making everybody happy. What's the downside? Maybe a bit of gray hair, receding hairline, a bit too much tequila every now and then. And how do we reinvent ourselves? So before we go forward, I just want to rewind the clock a little bit. About five, six years ago, you know, when you ride the crest of the wave, all you do is you worry about how to celebrate. You never learn. But we only learn when the wave crashes and we're in the trough of the wave. I don't know about you, but I had many, many sleepless nights when the market crashed, wondering how I was going to pay with the rent or payroll. Do we keep this one off? What type of adjustments do we make? It doesn't matter whether you owe 1,000, 10,000, a million, or 10 million. It's the same amount of stress. But I'm happy to say that things have come back but they've come back very, very differently. It's because we've all learned how to evolve, and we've all changed, and we've changed with the times. We were all wondering, how quickly is it going to come back? No one ever thought it would take five years, did they? But in the meantime, we reinvented ourselves. We learned how to run our businesses leaner and tighter, how to be smarter, how to be more creative. As you said earlier, Diamond and Dudget made us, made us a lot smarter, a lot more creative but I run a much better business now today than I did then. And I want to share with you today some of the things that I've done to run a better business and to be a better businessman and also to deal with the changing times. So let's look back and see what has caused the biggest change. For me, it's the Google. The Google really screwed us, let's be true, okay? <laughs> Google took away more than 50% of my profits. No question about it, because if Mrs. Smith down the road can spell it and figure out what it looks like and where it comes from, she can find it. Not only can she find it, she can also find out what it costs. So it's taught us to work in a very, very transparent business. At the same time, we love Google because it helps us find everything that we need. But I think that I'd rather go back to the old way, although there's no turning back the clock, when that was our intellectual property. That's what we owned, our resources, the magic that we created. And so now we work in a much more transparent environment, so we have to learn how to charge differently and how to make a, bit, a different profit, although the profits are not like they used to be. Add to that the fact that we work in a completely unregulated business. There's no barrier to entry. You know, Mrs. Friedman down the road who had a wedding six months ago has got organizational skills, a laptop, and a pop-up table, an attic, a garage, or spare bedroom is now in competition with me. Okay. 
This is my 29th year of doing business in this country. I started off four, with $400 29 years ago. And I can honestly say I have a team of 30 people that work with me. I have an art department, I have an IT department, I have a legal department, I have management. And we spend very proudly a lot of time working very hard to build what we've built. Before the downturn, I closed 80% of the projects that came to me, from qualified buyers, obviously. Now, it's 60%. And the interesting thing is because I'm now competing with Mrs. Friedman down the road, okay, who doesn't have half the overhead that I've got, and the client says to me, well, Colin, look at your estimate, and look what Mrs. Friedman can do. If you can get there a little closer, then maybe we can work together. So I had to figure out a way, how do I keep the integrity of my brand, but how, and how do I at the same time not lose that job? Because like you, I've also got rent and payroll at the end of the month. So we're going to address that as we move forward. And then the next thing is our consumer has changed. And the consumer today waits till the last minute before they book an event. So they make us run through the hoops like there's no tomorrow. I see somebody giggling here. Somebody just called me for a wedding for 500 people at the end of October. It's like, what have you been doing? Did you just fall in love now? <laughs> and then add to that, that her husband is also telling her, go and get three estimates, go and get three quotes in this. This never used to happen before. So we've really had to change the way that we work. And a lot of that has come from Instead of us waiting for jobs to come to us, we have to actively go out there and search for jobs and work really, really hard to find them and to be competitive as well. So I'll share with you now some of the things we've done. One of the things we've done, we've created a couple of magazines. I'm about to launch my second magazine. Zero cost to me. I've got to work with advertisers from my creative partners. I don't ever refer to anyone as a vendor. Vendors park cars and sell hot dogs. Okay? We are all creative partners. I think it's a much more elegant way to speak to one another. So I've got my creative partners. It gives me the ability to showcase what they do under my umbrella, and it gives me an opportunity to send this out to our database at speaking events, at conventions, etc., etc. The other thing I've started to do is to create short movies. So I'm going to share with you now a short little movie that we made that lives on our website at colincowie.com. And let's roll the video, please. I've always been inspired by Maya Angelou's poem. She said, People forget what you'll say. People forget what you do. But people will never forget the way you make them feel. That's what we do with our parties. We change the way people feel. We make them happy. We celebrate their lives. We celebrate their milestones. We're in the business of making everybody happy. What is so rewarding is the idea starts in my mind and then it lands upon a piece of paper. Then it becomes a blueprint, then a drawing, then a presentation. And all before you know it, there's this massive production that takes on a life of its own. what we do. Thank you. So now let's get into the design celebrations, how we move forward and how we make our business work. I come from the world of the DNA and the five senses. No two of my jobs have ever, ever looked the same, and they should never look the same. Why? Because each person's DNA is completely different. So it doesn't matter whether it's a bottle of champagne, a hotel in the Middle East, or bride and groom. I start with the DNA. Then I add to that the time of the year, the time of the day, 
And then we take you on a journey by laying on top the five senses, what you smell, touch, taste, see, and hear. And these don't get switched on at the beginning of the evening. These are living organisms that we get to use throughout the duration of the evening. When it comes to smell, the fragrance when you walk into a room. I don't want to be confused by smelling vanilla when I'm eating lamb. Taking all these things into consideration. Touch, the amount of starch that you might have on a cocktail napkin or on a napkin. Or maybe it's the fringe that's on that overlay that tantalizes your knees for one and a half hours during dinner. Or perhaps it's the taste, whether it's something we have at the appetizer, wonderful way we move forward to an entree, and of course you'll see these, they recur everywhere. These are my shots. I called it 120 miles an hour. It's like my American Express card, I don't leave home without them. Equal amounts of coffee, espresso, tequila, will buy you another hour and a half on the dance floor, guaranteed. <laughs> see, you know, the eye visually, a picture is worth a thousand words. And it's nothing like making that first impression. We all know you've got three seconds to make a first impression. And then here, I think power, the, 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 the power of music is so incredibly important to us. And of course, now how do we get started? A lot of people come to us through word of mouth, through inquiries, they go onto our website, or they come to us through some form of our marketing ideas, maybe the magazine, or they get to watch the video. They get, before they come to the office, we qualify them. So the most important thing I'm going to teach you today is what you see on the screen behind me. You all have to start charging design fees again. We have to separate ourselves. It's true. We have to separate ourselves from everybody else. I've been charging design fees for the last year, and I've had no pushback whatsoever. And it allows me to separate myself from others. So now, who do you charge design fees and who do you not choose charge design fees? And how do you negotiate? So I decided to bifurcate my product. So in the first instance, we have Team Cowie. And Team Cowie is the trusted team that's worked for me. It's actually three decades, Linwood. I've been around 29 years. <laughs> so we take our team and Team Cowie will do all the interaction with that client. I get to oversee the creative in the creative presentation. And I also, but I don't get to go to the actual event itself. It's all run by the producers and the team. And that for that, they charge a percentage of 20% is the bottom line. But now if I am competing with Mrs. Smith down the road, I can say, well, I'll charge 20% up to 100,000. I'll take 17.5% on the next 100,000 and 15% on the next 100,000. So that way it gives me the ability to be able to negotiate with someone else. So I do get to pay the rent, the water, the electricity, and the coffee machine at the end of the month. The next thing we did was I wanted to protect myself. So we created Signature Column. And Signature Column is the ability for the client to have the made-to-measure approach of working with me directly. So this allows me to charge a design fee, which is $35,000 and up and it gets the team for 20% on top of that. So I get the design fee plus the percentage, and it also allows me to have two completely distinct different products. So it doesn't matter if at a cocktail party two people are talking, it's, did you use Team Cowie or did you use Signature Column? And now that there's enough confidence in the market, and we feel that people are spending, there is a group of people, all these young billionaires, all these young tech people, who are looking to do thing for things that are outrageous and things that are completely unique and not available to everybody else. So we just launched White. It's called Colin Cowie White, and this is a complete haute couture approach to your event. We have scoured the world, and we've created exclusive arrangements with certain venues that are not available to other people, palaces, chateaus, villas, game reserves. We've worked with fragrance houses to make a custom fragrance for the bride and the groom, a commemorative fragrant candle for all of the guests to take home with them, maybe a, a blended armagnac from the birth date of their two cognacs, haute couture wedding gown, handmade shoes. So this is complete made to measure, and this is me at six figures plus the 20%. So I've now been able to create three distinct products and maintain the integrity of my brand, but at the same time be able to speak to three different audiences. I hope everybody starts charging fees now.
Okay? It's there. The fat is there. It's time to start taking it again. We are all too fabulous and we all work too hard to do what we do. It's time to be rewarded again. This is a Team Cowie event. I never met the client, I never went to the job site, I never saw them, I saw the creative presentation. And I think they did a pretty good job. I love my team, I'd be nothing without the team. Now, this is a signature event, where everything here was custom made, made to measure, I spoke with the client, I attended all the client meetings. This is actually an interesting party, we'll show you in a minute. Also a signature event. And then we get to a white event. This is where clients spent $12 million. And you can see I built a stone church. It was interesting. It was very interesting because when the tent went up first, the father of the bride said to me, well, let's go look at the chapel. And three days later, more we came together. and said, well, let's go look at the church. And the day before, he said to me, oh, my God, this cathedral looks amazing. And that was the inside of the cathedral with stone floors, hanging drapes, stained glass windows in the full nine yards. And then made our way into a magnificent dinner reception. You can see custom-made tables, hand-upholstered chairs, hand glass dance floor, surrounding by one single piece of fabric in the ceiling. And of course, the best way to burn money in the world is with fireworks. <laughs> so now once we have figured out what we're doing with the client, we've established what they are, are they team, are they signature, or are they white? We then go and do a site inspection with them. And uh, that's the good part about my business. I've now clocked 12 and a half million miles and have visited almost 100 countries in search of fabulous on behalf of my clients. We signed a contract with them. Actually, this slide should have gone before the other one, sorry. We signed the contract before I get on the aeroplane. <laughs> And we assign a producer, there's always one lead producer, one man in, one man out, which I like that theory, one person responsible. She has access to the art department, to the IT department, managed support, and obviously all of our creative partners. And then once we've taken that side inspection and we've found out what they're like on their Pinterest page, on ColinCowieWeddings.com, through our inspirations pages, we're then able to start putting their idea onto paper. And we create a series of mood boards that we use for the ceremony, pre-ceremony, cocktails, dinner. For each one, there's a mood board, there's a floor plan, and there's a set of fabrics. So that we can start to articulate what their vision is going to look like. At this stage, they start to sign up, I like this, I don't like this, I like a bit more. And it allows me to narrow it down and to fine tune and focus what that vision is going to look like. Then we create the creative presentation. This is something that the client pays for, and it gives me peace of mind knowing that I've articulated and interpreted what they're looking for, and it allows them to go to bed at night thinking, these guys know what they're doing, and uh, I know exactly what it's going to look like. And it's an opportunity for them to smell, touch, taste, see, and hear a mini version of what it's going to be. For a small team Kawi event, we'll do this in our conference room. If not, we'll rent a studio somewhere, close by and we'll set up the entire production. So this is the wedding we did in Tuscany and I'll show you the full wedding in a, in a little while, but you get to see what we did for the rehearsal dinner. Then she gets to feel the embroidery on the napkin. She gets to see what, the, what the, the, the dinner is going to look like. And maybe a cocktail or two. A wedding we did in the Hamptons. The tasting, this is my favorite part. It's all about cocktails again. So here we get to taste the wine, taste the appetizers, make sure that we've got the right ingredients, make sure that it looks good on the right plate. We make final adjustments there, the chef is on hand, and of course we get to do the wine pairing over and over again until we get it right. It's a, in, in life, you know, I said earlier on, well, I should I say, I, I quoted earlier on, Maya Angelou, it's all about how you make people feel. You know, and Oprah used to say, God is in the details. So it's the small things that make the big difference. For instance, if you are having a party on a destination beach, when the ladies have gone down onto the, onto the sand, a chilled lavender scented damp towel is placed inside their shoes to get rid of that sand afterwards. Or if we are outdoors, there's sunscreen from zero to 100 and zero. Or flip-flop station, since we can't do Novocaine for the toes, I think flip-flops are a good number three. Hangover remedies. We love to put these for the turn down uh, where you're doing a destination wedding on your pillow. 
or perhaps leave it in the, in the, in the powder room. I always love the idea of having these big trays of bathroom amenities. We put them in all the bathrooms at all the different events. You never know when you're looking for a hairpin spray, a mint, or something to repair. And of course, if the weather's inclement outside, it's fun to be able to offer the ladies a wrap. I always said that a well-informed guest is a happy guest. So on the left, we see the confirmation package after we received an invitation. It's got luggage tags. It's got the information that tells you where, what, what time to be, how to be, and what to wear. And then when you arrive at the actual event, in the middle, I like to have a welcome package, which once again reiterates that thank you for traveling this long distance to be with us. Our celebration begins tonight. Be dressed this way at 7 o'clock. And I find that you've got to tell people, tell what you told them, and tell them again. Because people are like sheep, you know? But give them alcohol, they become retarded sheep. You know? You want me to do what? Where? And of course, everyone's looking for a charge these days. So we put these huge, big floral arrangements, and inside, in the middle of each one, is a charger for your phone. It's amazing. I've never had a spare one hanging about. They're always doing their work. Buddy Mary Station, we make the best Buddy Mary Stations. I actually like to take the bags of tomatoes and squeeze the juice freshly out of them, grate that fresh horseradish, and let you feel that we never ended last night. We just continued the celebration. Swizzle sticks with your name on. So now let's talk about some of the, the trends that we're seeing in food. Everything today, Australians call it paddock to plate. We call it farm to table. But it's no longer, maybe we want to know that it's organic. We want to know which particular farm does it come from. In other words, this appetizer in, the middle, in this here was this morning's egg from Blue Hill Farms. You know, or it's the chicken from Snake River, wherever it might be. Tray past pairings are a good one. So tomato soup and a little grilled cheese sandwich, or a, a rum cola with a little tostada from Cuba, or slightly more decadent, a little caviar in a teaspoon with a shot of frozen vodka. But I love the idea of creating experiences. The two big buzzwords we're hearing in the industry right now are experience and authentic. And when you get to put the word authentic in front of experience, then you really have a winner. Gorgeous vegetables. It's amazing to see how big the vegan movement has come. You know, I've started now to see some really, really talented vegan chefs. And because so many people have so many intolerances when it comes to what they eat and what they can't eat, I think you're going to see a lot more happening in the vegetarian and the vegan movement moving forward. Remember before it used to be the grilled portobello mushroom, that's what you got, right? Or the steamed veggies on the side. I think presentation, we look with our eyes, we eat with our eyes. On the left-hand side there, if you did a little bit of foie gras on toast, it can either get very soggy or get dry quickly. Little cloches make it a great experience. You lift the cloche off, you have the little appetizer, it's exactly like the chef wanted you to have it. Or the way we present things three-dimensionally. What we did on the right, we created these little rings and we used them for an engagement party. This was a, a party that I did for 500 people. I really don't like buffets. I think buffets bring out the worst in everyone. <laughs> it's like the vulture syndrome comes out. You know? Have you ever seen someone's got a plate and there's the chicken and there's the fish and the French fry and the salad and they put something else on top. You might as well put in a Cuisinart and put a tube down your throat. <laughs> right? Because there's this fear. Let me put it on my plate now because it won't be there when I go back again. So I like the idea of curated, elegant food stations. Also, a buffet is a one-pot, one-shot wonder. You go up there, put all the food you can, you sit down, it's done in 20 minutes. But when you do the curated food stations, you get to create food experiences. So each food station is paired with a wine, never more than two or three items on that station. So you move through very quickly, no choices to make, and you grab one choice of one or two wines on your way out. So this is a collection of seafood and fabulous white wines. Moving on to Spanish charcuterie and artisanal cheeses with a couple of reds. And then somewhere else in the room, a pasta station with one pasta, one risotto, and choice of two wines. Uncomplicated, easy, chic, and allows you to make a wonderful statement. Moving on, a Chicago steakhouse, beautiful, amazing ribeye, 
paired with the wonderful French fries and a grilled asparagus and the choice of two red wines. Dessert, a little demi sec, a little demi -sec dessert together with a tray of amazing, fabulous uh, mouth-watering desserts. And then you've offered yourself a five-course meal that's allowed everyone to speak and share time with one another versus standing in line and having a really proverbial experience. And it's for no additional expense. In fact, you actually have less expense here because it's a certain amount of food per curated uh, station. I love tapas. You know, I think they say it's all about sharing. So this is a fun concept we came up with because today, as you know, you can rent absolutely anything and any type of dish. So we get literally a hundred, maybe thousands of these small little tapas plates, each one with a different idea in them, a different item. The guest gets an eight by eight charger. They walk along, they pick whichever they want. They've had a great tapas for a first course. And follow that with a big, this is a good one shot, one part wonder, the idea of a big paella to serve a group of people, a vegetarian, a seafood, maybe a meat one, is a fun way to go. Seafood station, I never came across a poached shrimp I didn't love. It's the best crowd pleaser, although there's nothing worse than a defrosted poached shrimp, right? When it's kind of like glossy and it looks a little bit like yesterday's news. No. Food trucks, who would have thought that this is the biggest trend today, but without a doubt, it's probably one of the best trends we're seeing. Great gourmet food. Used to think the food truck is what used to feed the construction workers, now it feeds the well-heeled and the elite. Family style, I think that as we tend to be entertaining a lot more casually than we have in the, in, in the past, this is also a fun way to go. There's nothing more fun than passing big platters of food around. It's great for conversation. And then some trends in dessert. The candy station, I mean, we should all be diabetic with the amount of sugar that we've been rammed down our throats at all these parties. It's amazing. So, and I love the idea of taking candy stations and being able to match them to particular colors. And it seems that the macaroon has officially replaced the cupcake, right? <laughs> we were cupcaked out for a while. Now we find macaroons in every shape and every color and every finish. And I love the idea of making the cheesecake stage. You make a basic cheesecake and put a dozen different types of toppings in front of it. It allows you to make something ordinary Extraordinary out of something ordinary. Let's talk about some trends in cocktails and champagnes. So this gentleman was a bartender when I met him. Then he became a mixologist. And now he's what we call Yusuf Austin, the cocktail architect. And he's like my American Express card. This is the guy I never leave home without. Because he charges and fuels all of our parties and makes the most incredible cocktails. You know, ice, frozen water. But we get excited about it. You, know, you can put a slice of jalapeno in there, a slice of lime, a cherry or a frozen strawberry. It can take anything from drab to fab. Shot service. These I love to serve just after the dinner, just after the last speech, as people hit the dance floor, take these trays made out of ice with the test tubes inside of them. They're fully loaded and all of a sudden, Everyone has one, two, three, or four. They're slipped down real quickly. They're cold. They're refreshing. Equal amounts of sugar, caffeine, and tequila. Cha, cha, cha. You can't go wrong. <laughs> Beverage servers. I've sold 175,000 of these on Home Shopping Network. <laughs> and it's a great way because if you're doing something on a budget, it's an incredible way to serve a lot of people with a little amount of help. And as you know, that people are like flies with food. You'll always find your way to the bar. Right? And if you can set up a beverage server with ice, beautiful accoutrement, and, and, and all the garnishes that you need, it's a great self-help station. Another thing that we do, we like to set up really well thought out with a lot of detail cocktail bars. Uh, in this particular instance, well-crafted, you get to choose from a variety of different drinks, but they're colorful and they're exciting and they really become an experience. I really think we serve the best Bloody Marys. So the idea here is to take the fresh tomatoes, squeeze them, grate the, 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 uh, the horseradish, put oysters, put fresh shrimp in them and turn it into a great experience. Yes, bigger is certainly better. It's interesting, you saw me showcase caviar earlier on and you're seeing me showcase big format bottles. For five years, 
I never served one bottle of champagne that was bigger than 750 ml, and I never once served caviar. What you've seen is what we've done in the last year and a half. So it's a good indication of things really are back and coming back. Trends in entertainment. So just like we spoke about Team Cowie, Signature Colin, and White, I've been able to do this. And my big new trend has been putting the DJ together with the band, not the DJ or the band. So we create the biggest thing we've been hearing now are mashups. So I will take, for instance, and you'll see over here, the band will be playing Earth, Wind and Fire September into the same rhythm. When they stop, the DJ will go seamlessly into Bruno Mars. He plays about 16 beats, 20 beats, and he goes back to the band. And the audience says, what did I just hear? That's amazing. So this would be what we get to do, like you see here with the whole DJ and the band, would be something we were to do for a signature Colin event. For a Team Cowie event, we do the same thing, but instead of having the whole band, we'll have the DJ with the violinist or with the saxophonist or possibly with someone playing percussion or drums, but giving that same dynamic something that is different. And of course, for, for the white series, we put a full orchestra together with the DJ. So once again, the ability to bifurcate and have those three different products. We do the curated live entertainment. I like to make sure that they're dressed accordingly, that they match my theme, and everything works towards one goal. Lighting is so important. This is a party that we did where you actually walked into a screen, into a, a, a um, Paramount, one of the sound stages, and we had all these different projections. And as the dinner progressed, so as you can see, the, the colors of the table also changed as well. Now, this was a party we did six months ago for a major celebrity, and he was a real foodie. And so we did incredible tastings. I got a three-star Michelin chef in California to oversee the food. And you walked into the middle of this cave of the wine cellar in Napa Valley. And there was this table. And the table was just great. The light wasn't on when you walked in. And the guests were seated and for 58 guests. And 58 waiters walked in. And on cue, 58 waiters put down 58 plates. And as they put down the plates of food, the, food, the table changed to, changed to a particular color. So for the first course, it was caviar and a, on an ice plate with frozen vodka. And then the table, the, the, the table was cleared. And then the table went back to neutral. And when the foie gras went down with the Chateau Echem, the table went to amber. And it went to pink for the lobster salad and to red for the meat. So it's a great opportunity to take food, art, theater, people, technology, and bring them all together and take people on an incredible gastronomic journey. In tabletop, it's all about reflective surfaces. The more mirror, the better. Old mirror, vintage mirror, loose sight mirror, mirror runners, mirror play settings. It had a big dose of glamour and style. It was a time when you couldn't rent these, you had to have them custom made, but most rental companies now do carry a lot of mirrored product. Photo booth. I haven't done a party in two years without a photo booth. You know, isn't it fun after three cocktails how lovely and silly you like to get? And now you can post it to Instagram, Snapchat, Google, you can put it wherever you want. And this is actually fun. The one on the left, we actually had a hashtag for the weekend, and on the final night, we had all, we captured all the hashtags, all the Instagram posts, all the Facebook posts, all the Twitter posts. We projected them live on the wall of the party. So everybody got to relive the whole party while it was taking place and they were posting live. These are all fun ways to, this was a, a photo booth we did outside in front of the trees. On the right we did for uh, a Gatsby style party. Escort cards. Well-informed guest is a happy guest. Let them know exactly where they're seated. These are fun little details that make a great first impression. And sometimes we use them functionally as well. I love the idea of them written in the mirror with a big frame. Little vases on the left-hand side. These are wine corks in the middle. Just want to acknowledge my team. I have the most amazing team of people that I'm so excited to go to work with every day because without them, I would never be who I am. And moving at the pace that I move, it's because they are so hardworking, professional, and dedicated. And they're a pretty good looking bunch, too. So, one of the things I do, my lead producer on every big event 
gets given a $500 clothing voucher. She's been spend, she spent eight, nine months working on an event. So for $500, she can get new hair, makeup, and a gown, and get to look good for the party itself. If budget allows, I provide hair and makeup for my girls too. Now let's look at some recent work. This is what's happened in my world the last two years. Uh, you saw the creative presentation for this. This was the wedding that we did in Tuscany. We like to shake things up a bit. So we did the welcome dinner on the Thursday night. And the idea was southern Italy, Sicily. So it's beautiful, served in this little town square that we created. Next day, Friday, we had an amazing pool beach party where we got to take this, this Andy Warhol print, use the colors that we created, customize it, and have a really good time. DJ playing at the pool. They all got horribly drunk. I sent them back to their rooms to go and rest, and then it, this is before, they had a good time. And then uh, that evening at nine o'clock, they came back for champagne cocktails, and this was our formal dinner. This was the black tie night, the rehearsal dinner. So it said two very beautiful long tables, exquisitely dressed. There we can see the same identical ideas. This is what took place in, in Tuscany, and you saw the creative presentation which took place in New York. And once again, we had one waiter for every guest. And nothing like fireworks to wrap a smile around your face two and a half times after a couple of bottles of wine and a shot of vodka. The next morning, we did the ceremony at noon. And I love this idea of walking through these strolling minstrels. We used this organic shape aisle. We actually planted the lavender directly into the ground and, uh, and created this really, really beautiful ceremony area with the backdrop of a Roman ruin. It was followed immediately afterwards with a lovely Tuscan luncheon. You remember we just set up the one little portion of this in the office. So look how beautiful that looks when you're seating 155 guests. And the food was all served family style. Pastas, antipasta, grilled fishes, beautiful folk music, a fun wedding cake, lovely dessert buffet. And then I sent everybody home to sleep. And at 8.30 you got a knock on your door and there was a waiter with two double espressos and two Red Bulls. <laughs> and you had to come down to the square. And from the time that they had gone to their rooms to the time they came back, we set this party up with a full glass dance floor. We carpeted the area. We really turned it into a very beautiful environment. We took all the little furniture that they had. We put our new slip covers on it, got to reinvent something there and uh, they danced until 6 o'clock in the morning until the sun came up. Uh, this we did at the end of last year. Uh, it was very interesting when Oprah said to me, 15 years ago, sorry, 10 years ago, we did the legends for the theme. We honored the, fe the living female legends who had paved their way for the legends of today. So she said, well, let's do all the men. And this was before the Cosby issue. So we wrote down all these names and the list got shorter and shorter and shorter. And we said, we can't do the men. Okay. <laughs> there was only one man who had a scrupulous record. Sidney Portier. Everyone else had four children and had done this and that and the next thing. <laughs> so we figured, what could we do and who could we honor? So we chose to honor the living members of the civil rights movement. And we threw this incredible party and event uh, at the Baccarat uh, Hotel in Montecito. And here they are in all their glory. It really was a very beautiful, touching night. I used different shades of gray with burgundy as a color scheme. Incidentally, that huge big light fixture you see was really inexpensive to make. There's this wonderful resource called Shop Wild Things. We bought all their beads and you buy them hanging and we attach them to these four concentric squares and used this as ability to light and project all of our other light on. Became a beautiful focal point for the whole party. Of course, every detail is important. How beautiful are those flowers? I love the idea of setting up a beautiful bar where it's not just really a, me a bunch of bottles and glasses and things, where it really looks like a real cocktail bar. And of course, they danced and had a good time. This was the wedding that you saw in the vineyard. Uh, it was a beautiful wedding. The weather was incredible. The three days after it, five minutes before the ceremony, we had six inches of rain, literally. Yeah. But we were pretty buttoned up with, with the, the tents and we were able to keep everybody dry. A little change in plan of getting them from A to B. 
but I love the idea of using all these residential pieces of furniture in this environment. We made our way to cocktails. Here's Yusuf, and then into that beautiful dinner tent. Like the idea of the details, you're putting the decals in the back of the bride and the groom's chair. This is my favorite moment at a party. When the candles are burned down, the music's taken its effect, everyone's got a, a rap, smile wrapped two and a half times around their face. That's why we do what we do, right? This is a beautiful party we did for at the Donald's place in, uh, in um, Mar-a-Lago. It's interesting because the bride didn't like the color gold at all. So I said, what are we doing at Mar-a-Lago? So basically what we did, we de-gilded Donald Trump's lily and then we colonized it. How did we do that? I built a tent inside the ballroom. So we got rid of all, you can actually see, everything you see on the left is what the ballroom looked like. And you walk through these, these, these tent doors into this beautiful enchanted forest. With a beautiful wedding. There's those shots again. So this was what I showed you in brief, but I'll show you the rest of the story. This is the entrance to the cave in Napa Valley. This is how you walked in. So you can imagine this visual of all these candles, a thousand candles, leading you in to this beautiful dinner table, which changed different colors through the courses, with an extraordinary service. Then we made our play into the clubhouse, where we did after-dinner cocktails and dancing. There's desserts. And then the next night, we had another 100 guests arrive. So we did a slightly different dinner. But look how I served the caviar. I took the actual tin. I put a bit of creme fraiche, egg white, egg yellow, all at the bottom with the caviar, and gave them wooden spoons. They're basically eating caviar out of a tin. I thought it was kind of decadent for a group of people. And with a series of rounds, I've never ever done a room filled with either rounds or squares. I love to mix them up, some with cloths, some without cloths. So it creates a bit more of a modern feeling and interpretation. And then we sent them to this amazing nightclub. So you have to imagine, all these people got into the vehicles outside, and I drove them for five minutes to a tent in another location. But I had mirror balls inside the tent, I had those shots inside the tent. They had no clue. They walked out, they walked into this nightclub. Nobody had any clue where they were. And then I brought out my favorite performance artist, Dieter von Thies, unabashedly the queen of, 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 of burlesque. She did a performance, and again, they had a good time. Just want to end off this presentation by letting you know that almost 20% of my work is spent on doing charity. I think it's so important that we give back. I focus most of my work philanthropically around children, around arts education, and healthcare, and support five big charities uh, in this arena, and this is one of them that we just recently did where in, in uh, New York at Gotham. And I also happen to not only design and produce, but I'm a very, very skilled auctioneer and fundraiser. I can pull teeth out of a Rottweiler's mouth with my bare hands <laughs> to get money. And on that note, I think we've got time for a few questions. I think we've got four or five minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone have a question? Yes. I think you know, no, I think you pour real because the idea of putting, can we get a microphone for the roaming if possible? The idea that the lady's question was when we do the pairings at the food stations, is it a tasting of wine or is it a full serving of wine? The whole idea is for the food experience, the gastronomic experience. So you don't have to go from the buffet in a line and then run to go get a drink. So you get that particular food and that drink in a full portion at the same time. So it creates a better dining experience. Yes? So how do we maintain the control when we're 90% down the line and the bride says, I've got a new idea? How do we control that process? 
you know, if, if the bride is reasonable, we'll be accommodating. But if she's all over the place, you know, nothing makes people behave than money, okay? Then you start to charge. And in our contract, it says that you are allowed to make a certain amount of changes. But if they get to the stage where they want to make too many changes, we, we let them know that the next change is going to incur cost of money. Because at the end of the day, every, every extra amount of time that you've got to redo that work is the amount of time that you could be spending with another paying client. And it's amazing because our job, really, you know, every bride comes to you with 14,000 pictures you've been collecting from People magazine, Pinterest, and she was this high, since she thought she wanted to be a princess bride, and then got confused thinking she was Calvin Klein. Right? <laughs> it's our responsibility to be ruthless editors and to be able to tell her story and say, these ideas work for Friday, you can use this for Saturday, and maybe the last few will work for the brunch. Anyone from this side of the room? Yes. I'm interested in how you find your creative partners and if they travel with you. When you have like 50 servers, do you get them in that part of the world or do they travel? I wish I had the budget to take 50 servers with me. Imagine how I would be traveling. <laughs> no, so I would say that 60% of our work is destination work. So most of the time we take a small, tight management team with us. There's an advanced team that will go ahead and they will find a local a, a, a creative partners for us to work with. So you always want a local florist. Now I'll bring like three of my top designers to work with that company. We do the same thing, we'll bring in our head of food and service who will work together with the food and beverage company of that particular destination. So with a crew of about eight or 10 people, I get to deliver what I could deliver in New York City, Los Angeles or Miami. And it's always very important to embrace local. You know how I learned this lesson? I was doing an all white Philanopsis wedding in Anguilla. And I had like 5,000 stems of white Philanopsis coming in. And we cleared customs. And the customs official said, I think I'll release those white flowers on Monday. I said, you've got to be kidding. The wedding's in two days' time. He said, well, if you want to sort it out, you can go speak to my sister. She's the local florist. <laughs> From there, the day onwards, we shop local first. You always need your allies. When something goes wrong, you want to know that there's someone there to help you. Yes. So you talked about your uh, tiered levels of service. Um, so I would imagine at the white tier level, Oprah has your number, she's calling you directly. But at your lower tiers, what is your qualification process? Do you have a dedicated team for that? And um, what is the process? For, the, for which, which service? Which, the middle one? So on the lower tiers, what is your qualification process? The, the qualification to, to do a Team Cowie event is, I look at the amount of time it takes, and I have to also back that into the amount of hours. So we cannot take an event for less than $150,000. So that's kind of like the opening range. So basically, that's from 150 to a million, and a million and up is signature column, and once it gets more than three or four, it becomes white. Actually, green. <laughs> <laughs> but I must say... <laughs> The green's not as green as it was in 2007. <laughs> but the grass is growing, we've planted the seeds. <laughs> I think we have time for one last question. Can you take us back about 28, 29 years and maybe share one or two lessons that you learned or maybe something that you'll never do again? Oh my God, do I have another 20 minutes? <laughs> we only learn from our mistakes. But you know, I arrived here uh, I didn't believe in the political system in South Africa, I didn't believe in apartheid, and I didn't want to spend my hardest working years there. We weren't able to take money out the country. I arrived at $400, I started a small catering company, and I built and I built and I grew. And I would say the most important thing is to stay focused on what you do. You know, where I got unhinged was I was doing all these different things, the market crashed, and I figured, what's my next big thing ahead of me? Because there's a half of 10 things going on. So I think it's important to own one thing before you move on to the next thing. I would say that probably would be the biggest mistake that I made. It took me about four and a half years to get back on track. But in doing so, you see, I believe in falling and I believe in failing because that's the only time when we learn. And it teaches you to be smarter. So, you know, I think, number one, run your business as efficiently as possible. You know, it's very important to make sure that we do as much as we can internally, use the resources that you have available, outsource as much as you can, keep your overhead as low as possible, and hire when you can. 
I, for the amount of work that we do, and across all my different businesses, we're like 29, 30 people. I run a very, very tight ship. And I think that's been the key to it. Before that, my, my staff size was almost double. So I would probably say that's probably the most important. And I think the most other important ingredient is to have fun what we're doing. We're in the business of inspiring people and teaching them how to live their best lives possible and have fun along the way. So I'm very excited and grateful I was able to kick off your celebration with you and your conference. Wanted to thank NACE Experience 15 for inviting me to be here. Good luck and thank you very much, everyone.